everyone and welcome back to Fully Playable Games. So in today's video we're going to be doing the second part of the mega collection pickup, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, probably my this is my biggest pickup that I have ever made. And there are some absolutely amazing bits in there so far. Um, we've gone through a load of the games. Um, and yeah, we're now going to start moving on to some bits that are going to be even uh, probably rarer and bits that I would never have expected to pick up as well. Uh, so yeah, some absolutely amazing bits to come up. So what we'll do is we will jump back to the footage that I've previously recorded uh, and yeah, we'll continue looking through everything that's in the boxes. So we are, I want to say about halfway through everything that we've got so we've now got a sort of big tray full of stuff and i've still got two bags uh full of stuff as well so yeah we're about halfway through i don't know uh how long the video is running at the moment so if um if it is running on uh, i might cut it here uh, but if not i will uh carry it on so you'll see one way or another Okay, so the uh, next box we've got is essentially going to be a bo uh, box of random bits and pieces. So the first one that we've got is a Atari ST, uh, or set of Atari ST keys. I wouldn't even class that as a keyboard because it's not got most of it, uh, which I was absolutely of the moon find. So obviously we are missing the number three key, uh, but... Uh, I do I do need keys for both of my Atari STs, so hopefully uh, I can uh, retro bright these, bring them back up a bit, um, and actually get a full set of keys on both of the Ataris. Uh, I then got a random uh, Nintendo uh, NES cart uh, sleeve. Uh, I think I got a couple of these. There's probably another one somewhere else. There is another one somewhere else. <laughs> Uh, then Dan just chucked this in for me. Uh, so this is Ga uh, Giant Gram 2000. Uh, all Japanese wrestling. Uh, so this is a uh, Japanese Dreamcast game. And yeah, looking at it, it looks... Looks to be complete. I don't know, don't know how many discs it's meant to have or anything like that. Um, and actually this is the first uh, Japanese Dreamcast game that I've got. Uh, I'm hoping that with this I can use the boot disc uh, and it will allow me to play the Japanese games. Uh, I don't know, I've never tried a Japanese game in the Dreamcast. Uh, next up, another thing that Dan just chucked in was a, uh, I think this is a Amiga uh, expansion board so this is a uh, memory expansion board uh, i think this takes it up to it's uh, a four meg extension as expansion board uh might be don't know don't know what the size of it is um he doesn't know whether it works or anything like that so i was like he just chucked it in uh and then yeah we'll see with that one uh then we've got a pokemon sun um soul galero figure uh, once again, uh, he just chucked that in. Uh, I think he knew that that's not the sort of thing you're going to be able to sell. <laughs> uh, right, then next up we've got a GameCube memory card. Uh, I don't think this is, this isn't an official memory card. Uh, this is an aftermarket one. Um, but yeah, I, I think I've got a couple of official Nintendo ones. So if I wanted to, I could probably just use that uh, and leave the official ones alone. Uh, then, while we're on the controllers, we'll do a couple of others that we've got. Uh, so I've got an original Dreamcast controller. I think I've got two in the collection at the moment. I think I've got my main one, and then I've got a spare one. So, saw that there, decided to chuck that in. Then we've got a PlayStation 1. So, this is the uh, slim uh, original PlayStation. Uh, the controller that goes with that. The reason I picked this up was because I think the one that I've got for mine... Because uh, I'd I've lost I'd lost my the one that actually come with my PS1, um, but it the one that I ended up picking up for it was a bit yellowed. Whereas this one looks really good condition. Bar a wipe over, uh, it will be uh, the one that I put with the console. Uh, 
Right, next up, we've got a Menisa sensor. So a little while ago, uh, I picked up a boxed Menisa uh, from Glenn at the boot fair. And when I got it home, I uh, found out that it didn't have the sensor and it didn't have the game. So I saw Dan had a spare sensor there. So I grabbed that off him. That's going to go straight in that box. And then at least it allows me to keep the sensor from my original Menisa uh, usable, basically. Uh, then I got a original NES controller. Uh, so once again, this will go into my NES box. So I think the NES that we put into the box was the one that come uh, that I got from eBay, and that one uh, was really good condition. So that was why I put it in the box. Uh, but I don't think I've got any spare controllers. I might have one spare already, not including the one that I use with my NES. So. Sort of, yeah, Dan had, uh, Dan had a spit, another one there, so I grabbed that, and at least I could put both controllers in that box, and we're good to go. And then, I think the last controller we've got is one that I actually saw a friend at work had, um, and he actually brought his uh, Mega Drive 2 in. That was the same friend that actually gave me the box uh, for the Mega Drive 2. Uh, so he's had his Mega Drive 2 set up on his desk, and he sometimes plays it at lunch. Uh, but he had this controller, and I hadn't seen it before then, and really wanted to pick it up. And that is the Sega Megafire. Uh, so this is a normal shaped controller, uh, but obviously it's got the sort of turbo buttons, uh, or turbo switches. And yeah, really, really different controller. Uh, it's not one that I had, so wanted to grab it. Uh, looking it up online, I think that one goes for, I go for about 25 quid. Uh, so yeah, when I saw that Dan had it there, I immediately grabbed it. Uh, right, next up, we have got, uh, so we've got a Master System cart. Uh, so this is Arcade Smash Hits. Uh, don't know too much about it, but there's a Mega Drive, uh, a Master System cart. Uh, then, just before I was leaving actually, Dan then chucked in a couple of other bits. Uh, so first off, we've got the case. Um, for a Game Boy. Uh, inside we've got a beaten up uh, for parts Game Boy. Um, yeah, not massively fussed about that, um, but it was a, a cool case to have for the Game Boy. Uh, he also chucked in a top part of a uh, Adva uh, Game Boy Advance SP. Uh, for me, the, the screen lens is the most important bit there because I've got a couple that need new screen lenses. Um, it's got the uh, magnifying glass and the light. Uh, yeah, just a couple of different bits of accessories. Uh, but as I say, the, the hard case uh, was pretty cool. And then in addition to that Game Boy, he also chucked in another one. Uh, once again, don't know the condition of it. Um, it's missing the lens and it's missing the battery cover. Um, but yeah, it could be a good sort of little project. Then he also chucked in a Game Boy printer. Uh, now, unfortunately, it is missing the top part. And when I looked at the battery compartment, there's a lot of corrosion in there. So uh, yeah, it's probably going to need uh, a bit of work to get it up and running again. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll probably see if I can find a, a top bit for it. Uh, and then it just uses the the normal Game Boy uh, expansion cable. Uh, then a couple of other bits he chucked in was sort of a, a Joytech uh, power pack. Uh, so it's a rechargeable battery for a Game Boy Advance, uh, which would be nice if I had the Game Boy Advance for it to go in. <laughs> uh, then we've got a magnifying lens for the Game Boy Advance, so that basically clips on over the top. Uh, what was this? Def Jam Vendetta. Uh, so I'm assuming that that's a copy of Def da Jeff Jam Vendetta on the GameCube. Ah, yes, so he had this on uh, one of the PS2s that you had. Uh, so that is the original PlayStation Network adapter. So this is for fitting a, um, an old IDE hard drive. Uh, so yeah, I think I've got a couple kicking about, like three, 300 gigs, something like that. 
Uh, so yeah, I'll probably look to use that on my modified PS2. I uh, don't know if I've done it yet, uh, but I have actually got all the parts to build a, a modded PS2. Um, and originally I bought a, an aftermarket uh, one of these, but yeah, he had that there. Um, so to have the proper, P, uh, the proper PS2 one is always the aim. Uh, then I also grabbed a, another uh, SNES power lead off him. Uh, this one will go into my um, my SNES box. So that's the, the one for uh, Super Mario All-Stars. Then he also had a little boxed uh, original uh, PlayStation memory card. Uh, so I didn't have one of these, didn't have one of, well, did, I had one, had the memory card, but didn't have it in the box. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to grab that uh, so that it can go onto the PlayStation shelf. And then to finish off this box, yes, we are still on that box. I actually got two GameCube, not GameCubes, uh, Dreamcasts. Uh, so yeah, I, he, he had a, a stack of these. Uh, decided to grab two of them uh, because at the moment I've only got my main Dreamcast uh, and I wanted to get one one I could modify so I wanted to get one uh, and potentially do the SD mod on it uh, and yeah just thought you know, why not grab another one <laughs> so yeah it was more a case of at least if, uh, as well if I need any parts uh, I've got a spare one there that I can take parts from uh, okay, so let me just move this box out of the way, uh, and then we will get into the next bag. Okay, so before we dive into the next bag, uh, I've got one more uh, big bit to show, and that is a Sonic uh, Mountain Quest. So this is a uh, one where you've got to sort of move the ball up the mountain to the goal, and yeah, this was really cool. Uh, I've seen these about, but just never been able to pick one up. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't complete. It is missing. Uh, I think it's the, the little balloon piece there and then the topper as well. Um, but I will see if I can try and track them down at some point. But it is in the box uh, and yeah, there's no corrosion or nothing like that. So it is all good to go. Right, so the next bag. And I'm actually pretty sure that this bag's got some really nice bits in. Not that anything else hasn't been nice, but uh, yeah, some different bits. So to start off with, we've got a PS1 game. Uh, so this is Lego Island 2, uh, the Brixter's Revenge, <laughs> okay? Uh, so yeah, anytime I see anytime I see these, I'll always pick them up. I think originally a lot of these were uh, PC exclusive. So whenever I see them on the PS1, uh, I will always grab them. We've got uh, Metro Prime Hunters uh, First Hunt. So this says demo, um, but looking at it, it is the same card that we've got. So we've, I've got this card only. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to get this one loaded up in a DS uh, and have a look at that. But yeah, quite interested to see uh, what the deal is with that. Next up, we've got a PlayStation 2 network access disc. So I picked this up to go with the uh, network adapter that we've got. Uh, and yeah, just see if, um, I, don't, I don't think it will work, but it'd be, uh, be an interesting one to try. Then we've got uh, F1 uh, 2011 on the 3DS. So once again, whenever I see a 3DS game, I will always pick it up. Um, it is complete. It's got the manual and everything in there, so that's good. Uh, right, so this... i tell you what, once again, I'll move that just there because all those three bits go together. <laughs> uh, so what do we got? So we've got another PS2 game. Uh, this is Battle Arena. Uh, Toshiden 2, I think it's called. I don't know anything about it. The thing that drew me to this was that it had a different case. So it's in a plastic case, uh, which, yeah, didn't know anything about it. So, yeah, it was a PS1 game, so I decided to chuck it in. 
Then we've got a PSP game, which is Fast and the Furious. Uh, once again, it's complete. Uh, I did go, he had a, a box full of PSP games, uh, but to be honest, I mean, he brought that out first. And when I first got there, I was just interested to see uh, other bits that I've wanted to look at. Uh, but yeah, ended up having a look at that towards the end of the night uh, and just chuck that one in there. Other than that, it wasn't really anything else there that I fancied. Um, PSP, at the moment, I can just take it or leave it. Uh, there are a lot of other consoles that I would much rather pick stuff up for. Uh, right, so... I'll tell you what, we'll do this next bit. And it is... A basket full of boxes. But these aren't empty boxes. They are actually uh, all in there. So, well, this one... So this uh, 102 Dalmatians, Puppies to the Rescue for the Game Boy Color. Uh, doesn't have the manual, unfortunately, or the insert. Uh, but I will say that the box isn't in too bad condition. Uh, we will definitely be seeing a lot worse. So yeah, not too displeased with that. We've then got Soccer on the original Game Boy. Uh, so it's got a sticker on there. Hopefully I'll be able to get that off. Uh, once again, there's no insert for it. But it does have the manual. So once we get the insert, that will be sweet as a nut. Uh, next up we've got uh, Star Wars uh, Obi-Wan as Obi-Wan's Adventures. Uh, this one is a bit beaten up. The box isn't in great condition. Uh, so let's just see. So it does have... Well, there's something in there. Yeah, so there is the game cart in there. Uh, once again, they're using these aftermarket um, cart holders. Uh, so it's not that great. So I'll have to look to get them swapped out. Uh, but yeah, there's a, a bit of a rip in that. But once again, I think once we get it into a box protector, um, it won't look that bad. So here, other than that sort of bottom corner, it's it's a tatty box all round, uh, but we'll do what we can with it. Uh, this box is heavily beaten up, uh, and that is uh, Advanced Destruction Robot Wars. Uh, so yeah, this one has the manual, no inserts. But once again, I'm not too worried if games don't have inserts uh, because it's easy enough to pick them up. Then we've got World Cup on the original Game Boy. Uh, this one actually looks to be proper complete because it looks like it's got quite a few bits in there. So we've got the game, which luckily is actually in an original uh, Game Boy sleeve. We've got the poster, the manual, and what's all this? Uh, don't know. Don't know what all that is, but don't think it's anything to do with the game. So, yeah, once again, once we get an insert for that, uh, and then hopefully putting it in a uh, box protector, uh, we'll probably be able to have that in good condition. Good-ish condition. Uh, then we've got Battle Tanks on the Game Boy Color. This one feels like it's complete. Yep. Uh, once again, this is going to need a new insert. Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. So, yeah, the game is in there. Uh, I think we this was one of the games actually we picked up at the Isle of Wight. Uh, so, yeah, really good to have a complete in-box version now. Uh, oh, there you go. We've got a complete in-box version of the two-in-one games so let's have a quick look actually because we wanted to see earlier on uh, whether this was all on one cart or not yeah it is so it's all on one cart so that other box would probably have been quite difficult to have uh, completed because obviously we don't have the cart um, and I don't think I've seen these around but once again uh, what I'm going to do with this one is I will have a look at the other box uh, and then look at between the two uh, what one's in a better condition and right, this one's a real shame uh, because this is actually sealed. But I'm going to have to undo the seal because it has been crushed. 
so it's going to need um, a new insert and everything like that. Uh, so yeah, this is Rebel Star Tactical Command uh, from Bandai Namco. Don't know, never heard of that one. Then we've got Tetris, Tetris World on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, once again, this feels complete. Yep, so that's all good. And then we've got another one of those two-in-one games. This time we've got GT3 Advanced and MotoGP. Uh, once again, this is going to need a bit of work to sort of get the box back. Uh, it's missing one of the tags. But, yeah, we'll do what we can uh, to get that looking presentable. So, yeah, a whole bundle of uh, complete in-box Game Boy games. Absolutely love that because, yeah, I sit at my desk most days and my, my Game Boy games are just above me um, and I'm a bit like oh, I really want to get more so yeah um, when Dan uh, had these I think originally I wasn't going to pick these up uh, but just before I left I said what do you want for the lot um, and he gave me a really good price on it all that I was like yeah fine I'll grab it uh, because I knew if I didn't I would have regretted it after uh, and by the time I'd got back to back around there uh, they would have all sold so yeah really glad to pick all them up so next up we've got a pc game and this is the seventh guest so we've got a couple of well we've got one main copy of this in the collection um but it is just cased only whereas i saw this and obviously there's the case and then it's got all the extra bits in there as well uh the the box is a bit crushed up uh, so I don't know what to do to try and sort of bring it back to shape But obviously once it's in the shelf, you'll just see it like that Then I picked up another copy of the Halo 4 uh, special edition um, I don't know why uh, this was just in with a load of the Xbox games, so I just decided to uh, grab it um, But from what I can feel it is complete uh, other, other than the, the other copy that we got, which we had to uh, buy the steel box uh, and put the, the game in separately. Okay, so now we get into uh, what I class as the heavy hitters. Because uh, when I first got there, uh, as I say, Dan was showing me the PSP games. And I originally said, you got anything cart based? Uh, he was like... Yes, follow me. <laughs> and yeah, we have got a whole load of cartridge-based games. Uh, but the first couple that we're going to look at aren't actually cart-based. They are disc-based. And the first two that we've got are going to be for the GameCube. So we've got Polar Express and then we've got Ice Age 2. Uh, once again, uh, I had to ask anything, anything GameCube. Uh, I had to ask and pick up. So really chuffed to have them. Uh, then the other one, right, so these next these next two do get a bit more interesting, even though they are CD based. Uh, so first off, we've got uh, Microcosm on the Mega CD. And this is one of the big box uh, Mega CD, or the Tall Boys, whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah, obviously for me, it ticked off multiple areas because it was a Mega CD game. And it was also a Mega CD game in a big box. Uh, once again, don't know anything about the game. Uh, haven't had a chance to play it yet. But, uh, yeah, really chuffed to have this in the collection. Um, and once again, it is complete. And then the other CD-based game uh, was... The reason I picked this up was it was a bit of nostalgia. Because it's actually a original PlayStation um, blockbuster game. Uh, so this is the case that uh, these would have it would have come in this case uh, when it was rented from Blockbuster, and yeah, whether this is a game that was just never returned to Blockbuster or someone bought it from Blockbuster in this way, uh, I don't know. Uh, but the game that's inside it does have the game, so it is uh, Cyber Cyber uh, that game Cyber Area, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, it's complete, comes with the manual, and yeah, I just love the fact that it was in the Blockbuster case. For me, 
uh, the what would have been absolutely amazing if this had been Destruction Derby, uh, because that was the game uh, that I first hired uh, when my my cousin uh, rented a PS1 from Blockbuster, uh, and we hired it uh, with Destruction Derby and Alien Trilogy, I believe. So yeah, had it been either of those games, that would have been even more had even more meaning to me. But yeah, just to have that in the collection, I thought was really cool. Uh, right, so now we're going on to the cart-based stuff. And first off, we're gonna start with the Master System. And we've actually got the box for the uh, Master System game that we had a little earlier on, uh, which was Arcade Smash Hits. Uh, so originally I had put this in the um, in the lot, uh, but when we went to uh, pack it all up, uh, Dan checked the box and it actually had, uh, I think it had Sonic 2 in it, uh, which I don't think I've got in the collection, but I decided to leave it uh, because uh, I wanted it in the box. Uh, so yeah, didn't see the point of picking it up. Um, but uh, I did. He did say keep the uh, keep the box, and then if you can get hold of the cart, then all well and good. So this has uh, three games on it. It's got Centipede, Missile Command, and Breakout. So it's really good classic games on there. Then the next Master System game was Double Dragon. Uh, doesn't come with the manual, unfortunately, but uh, I saw it there and just couldn't leave it. Had to pick it up. And yeah, really chuffed to have that in the collection. Uh, and before we get into the next lot, uh, Dan also passed that to me as well, which is actually a NES uh, cleaning kit. So one of the big problems you get with the NES is that the cartridge slot will get dirty. And a lot of people at that point um, just sell it off as faulty, uh, when normally you just need to clean that cart slot and you're all good. Right, so now we are getting into the Mega Drive games that I picked up, and I did pick up a whole stack. Uh, so the first couple I've got are actually marked up as Genesis games, um, but I am 99% sure that they will work without a problem uh, in the PAL uh, Mega Drive. So that is Muhammad Ali Heavyweight Boxing. Uh, so yeah, just an absolutely brilliant game. Uh, looking up on here, so it is marked as Genesis on the cart. Uh, so yeah, I'll try that after filming uh, and I'll leave you a note down the bottom if it does work or not. Then in addition to that, we've also got Chuck Rock. Uh, so I think I'm pretty sure I've got this in the collection, but um, yeah, I, I just decided to chuck it in um, just in case I didn't have it. And once again, I just there was so much there, I just didn't have the time to pull out my app. I mean, I looked, looked a couple of things up uh, towards the beginning, um, but as the, the night went on, there was just so much to go through that I wasn't able to, um, to yeah, ju just keep checking the app. Then, next up, we've got uh, Asterix, the Great Re uh, and the Great Rescue. Uh, so once again, oh, I have seen so many Asterix games, never actually played them, uh, but yeah, when I saw it there, I uh, decided to pick that up. Then this is a game that I've actually seen a lot of people talk about, and that's the Page Master. So this is based off a Macaulay Conkin film, uh, and yeah, it's actually I've had a, I've seen a lot of people say quite positive things about this. Um, I once again don't know what the game is like, and my back's going. <laughs> Uh, don't know what the game is like so I'm gonna have to have a look at that and then right so what I'm gonna do is I've got six more games I'm gonna go through these quickly and I'm gonna take a break because my back is killing me uh, before we do the last bag that we've got just here uh, so first off we've got Ryan Giggs world-class uh, or cha Ryan G well, champions world-class soccer Ryan Giggs now, the reason that I got this, I will be honest, I've got no interest in this game. But it is not a game that I have never seen before. So I, yeah, I had to chuck it in. Um, as I say, it's, I've never seen this out and about. Um, and yeah, even, even online, never seen anyone pick this up. So yeah, that's why I chucked that one in. 
Then we've got The Simpsons, Bart versus the Space Mutants. Uh, this is a game I've been wanting to pick up for a while. I'm pretty sure this is on my wish list as well. Um, we've got it on the NES, uh, but yeah, just wanted to get it on the uh, the Mega Drive, obviously, as well. It's going to be a slightly upgraded version, I think, uh, from the NES. Then we've got uh, the Aquatic Games, uh, featuring or starring James Pond and the Aquabats. Uh, so yeah, this was uh, this is another game that I've been on the lookout for a while for uh, because obviously I enjoy playing things like James Pond 2, uh, and this was a sort of spin-off of that. And yeah, decided to sort of saw it there immediately grabbed it. I think he had a couple of copies of it. Uh, then we've got uh, Winter Challenge. Now, the reason that I picked this up more than anything was because it was in a cardboard box. Uh, and you very, very rare. There's very few games, I think, on the Mega Drive that actually come in cardboard boxes. Uh, so because it was so unique, uh, that's why I picked it up. Then this actually goes with something that we picked up earlier on. And that is the Menacer game. So we've got the Menacer game and the Sensor uh, to go into our box Menacer. So now that is actually complete, which is really, really good. Really chuffed about that. And then the final game we've got in this bag. Don't worry, we've got other stuff in the last bag as well. Uh, and that is uh, Pit Fighter. So the reason that I picked this up, we have actually got Pit Fighter in the collection. Um, but it is just cart only. Uh, whereas this is complete in box, uh, so I picked it up as an upgrade uh, to that one. So I am going to go and grab a drink, take a quick break uh, before I come back and we'll go through the last bag. Okay, so <laughs> that's it. I promise I'm not 95 really. <laughs> okay, so we've got the last bag here and we have got some absolute belters in here. But the first bit I'm going to go through is a bit I've actually been putting off for most of the video. And that is a book. So this is The Legend of Zelda Hyrule History. Uh, so this is an absolutely stunning looking book uh, with all pictures and sort of backstory and lore uh, to different parts of uh, The Legend of Zelda. But in addition to that, uh, that also come with a Zelda... Uh, glass so yeah that was really good and then what Dan also chucked in with that let's see if we can get it out was a Zelda plush so yeah nice little set there and yeah I'll find somewhere to put them all but let's dive into this one so first thing in here was a PlayStation uh, I think this is the vertical stand horizontal stand uh, now, I've never had one of these. You, I always see it. Whenever you see a PS2, uh, like advertised, like Sony advertisement or anything like that, it always come with this. But the actual console didn't come with this originally. Uh, this was a uh, separate edition. So, yeah, I saw Dan had that. Had to pick it up. Uh, and then what I'll probably do is I probably will put it on my actual PS2. Uh, right uh let's have a look because this bag's got quite a few heavy hitters in <laughs> so first off uh dan just chucked these in didn't charge me anything for them uh these are a load of backup gamecube games uh now i said to him i didn't need them because obviously i've got a um a chipped xbox a uh, chipped gamecube with an sd card uh but yeah he chucked it in so Looking at it, there are Legends of Zelda Four Swords, uh, James Bond, 1080, Buffy, Sonic Adventure DX, Resident Evil 2, uh, Mario Party 6, Paper Mario, uh, da -da -da -da, Mario Party 7, Mario Power Tennis, Wind Waker, Resident Evil 4, no Pokemon, which was a bit disappointing. Uh, but yeah, as I say, not overly bothered with them. If I wanted the ROMs, uh, they're easy to download nowadays. So yeah, it is what it is. Uh, right. 
I'll tell you what, we'll do this next, because this is something that I've actually been looking at. Uh, I've been looking at it online for so long now that I've wanted to pick it up. And originally, when uh, Dan was describing it to me, when he first described it to me, I thought he was about to, because he was like, I've got this thing for an N64. Um, it's like an add-on. And I'm like, it's not 64DD, is it? And he's like, oh, I don't think it is. It goes in the top. And I was like, okay. Because I was like, if it, it was a 64DD, I would literally give you the wife and kid. You can take them, don't want them, give me the 64DD. <laughs> but uh, when I actually found, when I actually got there, um, he showed it to me. Um, and it wasn't actually for the N64, it was for the Super Nintendo. And it is a Super Wild Card. So this is a Super Nintendo backup um, device. So essentially what you do is you put your um, cartridge in the top um, and then on the side, it's actually got a floppy disk drive. So what you can do is you can back up your uh, Super Nintendo carts to a, um, a floppy disk drive and actually play them off the floppy disk. Uh, so there's a whole menu in here that is used for backing up the, the carts, um, playing the games from, you can either play a game from the cart or from the floppy drive. Uh, and yeah, I have seen these online before. Um, I, when I've seen them on eBay, um, they normally start off pretty cheap, like £20 or something. But by the time they sell at the end of an auction, uh, they're normally well over £100. Uh, so yeah, he had this. I was not going to leave without it. Um, so I yeah got him to chuck this in. Uh, this has got this. There's a couple of different models of this. Uh, there's the sort of 16 meg, 24 meg, and 32 meg. I think I don't think there's a 64. There might be. I'm not too sure. Uh, this is a 24 meg version. Um, so essentially, it's got a 24 meg internal storage uh, for doing all the backups. Um, so yeah, be looking forward to getting that tested. Um, and then, yeah, what I'll probably do is I'll probably do a whole separate video uh, just covering that. Uh, then we've got a couple more Game Boy games. Uh, once again, these are all complete in box. Um, and what I actually done with these, these was actually the ones that I picked up originally. So these were the ones, uh, before I asked about the other ones that we had, uh, I actually picked these up. So first off, we've got Tomb Raider, uh, The Prophecy. Uh, this is on the Game Boy Advance, um, and once again, it is complete. Uh, just uh, the box is a bit battered. We've then got uh, Bugs Bunny uh, Crazy Castle 4. Don't know, never heard of this game, never seen it before. Um, but once again, it is complete. Does need an insert, uh, but other than that, it is there. Um, and yeah, it's still it's got one of the aftermarket cases. So I'm going to go through and replace all the cases uh, with genuine Nintendo ones. We've then got Dark Arena. Uh, this one actually isn't too bad. This is just going to need a box protector put on it. Um, but there is some wear to the outer box. But yeah, uh, it's not a game I've heard of. Uh, what was it, Game Boy Advance? Uh, actually, looking at the back, it looks like... Uh, a first person shooter so that'd be quite an interesting one to have a look at and then the final one that we got was uh lara croft tomb raider uh curse of the sword on the game boy color um so this is actually this, looking at the back this is a sort of 2d platformer so yeah that would be an interesting one to have a look at uh, once again uh don't think Oh, yeah, it does have a manual. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I can get that box a bit more back to shape. So, yeah, we've got an absolute truckload of boxed uh, Game Boy games, uh, both advanced color and uh, standard. So, yeah, really happy. Really looking forward to actually trying to work out where I'm going to put them all, which is going to be the next big problem. Uh, then... While I was going through all of the PS3 games that you had, I uh, actually found he had a load of the um, sort of preview discs or promo discs. So we've got Killzone 2, uh, SingStar, SingStar Queen, and SingStar Motown. 
Uh, but obviously, I don't see these too often. So whenever I do see them, uh, I will always pick them up. Uh, I tell you what, we're going to do the last console that we've got. And this is a true retro beast. And it is. And it's television. So, yeah, I saw he had a couple of these there. And I... I just had to get it. It was so nostalgic that there was no way that I, I was going to leave without one of these. He done me a really good price on this. So, um, yeah, I think probably 30, he done 30 quid was about what he, he charged for this. Um, I haven't had a chance to power it on yet, um, but uh, I will get it powered on um, and let you know um, just below. Uh, whether that's all working he has got a couple more so what i'm probably going to do is if that doesn't work i will probably get the other couple that he's got off uh, got off him uh so that i can actually potentially take all three um and make one work working model but in addition to getting that i also got a couple of games for it as well so he just chucked these in for me uh so we've got uh ice trek uh don't know never heard of it <laughs> Uh, we've got Chess, we've got Lock and Chase, which actually sounds like the first game that I'm going to be playing, <laughs> and then we've got Bowling. So we've got four um, in television games to play, uh, which is really good, allows me to get the console tested. Um, I uh, When I originally picked it up off him, I thought I had a cart for it. Um, I actually thought that the um, copy of Smurfs that I had... Uh, was for the Intellivision when actually it wasn't it was for the ColecoVision so there was Vision in the name I just had the wrong console so yeah absolutely over the moon with that really really chuffed um, and I am praying that it works because that will be such a cool addition to the collection then next up we've got uh, so it's something to do with a PS1 And it is a PS1 demo disc number two. Um, and I actually think this is. Yeah, this is actually for this. This would have been the demo disc that come with the PlayStation 1. So the, the mini uh, PlayStation. Um, so yeah, that was a, a bit of a different pickup. You don't normally see them. Uh, the, I will admit the sleeve isn't in great condition. Um, but as I say, the, the disc looks really good. Then, uh, while we were going through, I also found a couple of Atari games. So we've got uh, Demolition Derby on the, uh, if I can hold on to it, that is. Uh, so these are all 2600 games. Uh, so these will go with the complete inbox 2600 we've got. Uh, so we've got Destruction Derby. Uh, this is. Yeah, a different sort of cart actually. You don't normally see them look like that. Uh, we've then got Cuba. Uh, so this is a Parker Brothers uh, cartridge. And then we've got Mario Bros. So yeah, I saw this there. This was one of the first games that I picked up out of the box. Uh, because, yeah, I'd wanted to add this in for a while. Um, and yeah, the, a proper original. And then in addition to that, we did also get a complete in box. And that is uh, Disney's Sorcerer's, uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice. So there's a bit of damage to the top of the box. But once again, once we get it into a box protector, um, it will put it back into its shape. Uh, right. Uh, so just as I was getting packed up, uh, Dan then chucked, uh, chucked me all of these. So there are a whole load of uh, Pokemon DVDs. Uh, some I've got, some I haven't got. Uh, so what I'll do is the ones I haven't got, uh, I'll pull out and put into the collection. Then I will say we are still not near, not finished because there's a whole load of car only games in here. Um, but before we get into them, uh, Dan also chucked this in. Uh, this is an Uncharted 4 uh, Thief's End uh, official licensed product. Um, and this is from Loot Crate. And this is a leather wallet but if you open it up it actually comes with 
the uh, coin from the game as well. So yeah, that was quite cool. And then uh, just inside actually, uh, I am a man of fortune uh, and I must seek my fortune. Okay, don't know what that means because I haven't played too much into Uncharted 4. Uh, but yeah, that was something different. And once again, if I can get something different, uh, I will always add it in. Uh, right, where am I putting everything? Okay, so actually before we get to the games, uh, I also grabbed a Atari ST mouse off him. Uh, just so that I could put that in with a box uh, for my uh, Atari ST. Right, so getting into these games. So we've got a bit of a mixture. So we've got uh, NES, N64, Master System, uh, Game Boy and Mega Drive. Um, but, so what we'll do is we'll look at a sort of Game Gear Master System crossover actually. And that is the Master Gear. So this is a Master System converter for the Game Gear. Uh, so basically you put it on the back of the Game Gear, screw it on, and then you can plug in your Master System games, play them on your Game Gear. Uh, so I haven't tried it yet, I haven't tested it, um, but it is one that I am looking forward to getting working. Uh, it will go with uh, the... So like I've got the Master Converter for the Mega Drive. Um, and yeah, one thing I was actually quite surprised that I haven't ever seen, I don't know if they exist or not, um, but if there is a Master System converter for the Game Gear, uh, so a converter that you can plug in and play Game Gear games, whether that's on the Master System or the Mega Drive, um, I don't think I've ever seen one. Don't know if they exist, so I might have to have a look, uh, see if I can find them. Um, and then what we'll do is we're going to start off with the uh, Game Boy games. So the first one that we've got is um, Hollywood Pinball. Uh, so this was actually one of the uh, empty boxes that we got. Uh, so that will be going in the box, which is good. Uh, we've then got uh, Roads, uh, Roadsters. Uh, so that is an original Game Boy game. Uh, but what the uh, so with these with the black carts, I believe these are original Game Boy games that are compatible. Uh, with the Game Boy Color. Um, there's, so, there's something with them. The, the black carts actually do have a significance. Uh, so yeah, I'll double check it and I'll put a message down the bottom. Uh, then we've got Alien 3 on the original Game Boy. And then to finish off, uh, we have got uh, Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle number two. So we've actually got uh, Crazy Castle number four uh, complete in box, which is good. Uh, and then we've got Crazy Castle 2. So I don't know anything about them. I've never heard of them. Uh, so yeah, that'll be something to look into. Uh, right, next up we have got a Master System game. And this is Wonder Boy 3, uh, The Dragon's Trap. Uh, so it is a bit sun damaged, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully the cart is all up and running. Uh, and yeah, it was a Wonder Boy game on the Master System. So that's why I grabbed it. Uh, then uh, we've got a couple of Mega Drive bits. So first off, uh, we have got uh, Green Dog uh, on the Mega Drive. So this was another one that had been in my wish list to get hold of. Um, I was hoping to get it boxed. Uh, and I was actually, once I found the cart, uh, was looking through uh, all of the boxes that he had uh, to see if he did have a complete in-box copy. Unfortunately, he didn't, but I was more than happy to take just the cart. Then I got a Japanese a Mega Drive car, and that is Spider-Man. So yeah, I saw it there. I've seen this one kick about a couple of times, uh, but actually looking online, if it was complete in box, I think you'd be looking at about a 60 or 70 pound game. And then to finish off the Mega Drive bits, another thing that was on my wish list was a Game Genie. So I wanted to pick this up so that I could actually do the, uh, basically got the proper uh, Tower of Power. So I think it is uh, Mega CD, Mega Drive, 32X, Game Genie, um, Sonic and & Knuckles, and Sonic 3. So yeah, now I've got the whole tower. Um, I did actually, I did used to have one of these actually, and I actually swapped it. 
uh, when I was younger with a friend. Um, I don't know. It was meant to be a temporary swap, but he was a bit of a beep. Um, and then decided to basically keep this. So I kept hit the game that I swapped with him. Uh, and that was Bob. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I was a bit miffed at the time. But now, quite glad to have that back in the collection. Uh, which is good. Uh, right, so next up, going to look at a couple of N64 games. The first one that we've got is uh, Nag uh, Nagaro. Uh, Winter Olympics 98. So I think we actually got the manual for this uh, in with all the manuals that we picked up. So I'll go through them, have a look, and if it is, I'll put them together. And then we also got Mario Party. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, it has got all of these uh, stickers on. So I'm going to have to see if I can. Uh, it's sort of peeling off, but I'm going to have to see if I can get it off without damaging the front cover or the front sticker uh, looking at it it is all it's quite damaged to start with so yeah i'll see what i can do but i do want to try and get that off um if not what i might look to do against sort of what i normally like to do i might look to get a replacement sticker um i don't know but yeah quite glad to actually have mario party um in the collection now and then we've got one more game, and this is going to be the last bit, and this is a NES game. But, yeah, I saw this there. Um, needs a bit of cleaning, um, but Dan has said that it is uh, is all working. Um, or as far as he knows, it's all working. And that is Kid Icarus. So, yeah, I saw that there, and I was not going to leave it, leave it there. Because, yeah, that to me... Is a heavy hitter game. I'm not sure what it goes for, uh, but I will have a look uh, in a minute. But yeah, really, really happy to have that. That is probably my uh, probably the heaviest hitter um, and uh, NES game that I've got. Uh, and yeah, I did say that I did pick up another sleeve, so this has been in the sleeve since I got it. Uh, and yeah, really, really chuffed. And that is it. That is everything that we've picked up. Um, so yeah absolutely monumental video uh, once again don't know if I've done it in sort of one or two videos uh, but uh, what I am going to do now is I am going to go and get all this inventory uh, and I'm going to go through and get sort of values for everything so that I can at least let you know uh, what versus what I paid versus what it's worth so yeah uh, it will probably take me a couple of days to do that so I will come back in a bit uh, and let you know how we got on. And that is everything that we picked up from Dan. As I say, it was an absolutely monumental pickup. Um, I, I just never expected to pick up this amount of bits in one go. And yeah, as I say, some bits in there just never expected to pick up. The Intellivision was something I'd always wanted, um, but never actually really looked for one. Um, and yeah, when I saw that he had one there, I just had to grab it. Um, now, what I will do, um, I've actually picked out a couple of the the bits and pieces from in there that I would say are my sort of top pickups. Uh, whether that be that they were more valuable than I thought they were, or bits that I wanted for the collection, or just a variety of bits. And yes, so before we get to them. Um, I have uh, gone through all of the consoles that we got in there. So I've tested both the Dreamcasts. They both work completely. Um, they read discs, they play discs, the controller inputs work. Everything works on them. They just need a clean. So that was really good. Uh, the Atari, once again, works perfectly. And I have to say, once I got it out of the box and was actually looking at it, it looks gorgeous it really does um, i absolutely love the way that that console looks the all black with the sort of silver atari writing on the front chef's kiss <laughs> um and then the intellivision so this was the one that i was really nervous about because obviously it was a new console for the collection um once again works flawlessly um obviously i've pumped it through my capture card the way i the way i have to do it with those sort of consoles where they've only got sort of rf out the way that I capture footage for is I actually put them out into a VCR 
uh, and then I've got a SCART 2 component, the component to HDMI, uh, and then HDMI into my capture card. So there's a whole mix of cables that I use to get it onto the capture card. Um, I will say I couldn't perfectly tune it in on the uh, the VCR. Um, yeah, it just there was a. Uh, a lot of background noise, but I did capture footage for one of the games. I think that was Ice Trek. Um, but yeah, it works perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a clean up, um, and one of the cables is coming out of the has been sort of pulled out of the controller. Uh, so I'm going to undo the controller, reset the cable, um, and yeah, just give it a really good clean. Um, so yeah, absolutely over the moon with that. Really, really chuffed that that is actually working. Um, I mean, the next challenge is obviously where I'm going to put it. I say that that's the, that's going to be the challenge for all of this stuff because uh, yeah, there are an absolute plethora of bits here. But um, so before we get into the totals, I just wanted to have a look through some of the sort of heavy hitters uh, that we picked up. And the first ones that we're going to look at is on the PS1. So the first one there is Lego Island Two, uh, the Brixter's Revenge. And yeah, I picked this up because I remember the Lego Island game. And I think I've actually got a Lego Island game. I think it's on the PS2. Um, but yeah, I was really surprised with this one. This one actually sells on eBay for about £27. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a shock. Uh, but yeah, really happy to have it in the collection. Um, so it's obviously a uh, more uncommon game than I thought. Uh, next up was another PS1. And that was the PlayStation uh, Blockbuster case. This just brings back so many memories for me. Um, I can't remember if I explained it in the video um, because it was actually a, a couple of weeks ago that I filmed that part of the video. But my first experience playing the PS1 uh, was when my cousin rented one from Blockbuster. Uh, one of the first game, the first two games that I remember playing were Destruction Derby and um, Alien Trilogy. So yeah, when I saw that blockbuster case there, I was like, no, I've got to put this in my pile. It is, yeah, it was amazing to see this, really was. And yeah, this is going to be one that takes pride of place within my PS1 collection. Um, I didn't get any pricing for that because with it being the blockbuster case, you're not going to see a lot of them, so you probably won't see them pop up on eBay. Uh, then next up, we've got a PS3 game, and this game has literally been soaring in value recently. I've already got it on the 360, um, but to have the other version on the PS3 as well, and that is Spec Ops The Line. So I have briefly played this. I think I briefly played the 360 game when I got it. Um, I captured footage for the channel. And yeah, this, uh, from what I played of it, absolutely amazing game. Obviously, it's a very controversial game uh, with regards to the, uh, the story and how that plays out. But graphically, it looks stunning. The gameplay is really good. And yeah, it's actually one that I've got on my list for this year uh, to play through. Um, looking at that, that goes for £28 at CEX, £40 on eBay. So, yeah, it is definitely one, if you can get hold of it, definitely pick it up. Then, next up, we've got a 360 game. And this one, the reason I'm highlighting this one is because it was actually a real surprise to me. Um, so, it's a, a, it's a valuable Connect game. And they're not two words that I actually thought would ever go together. <laughs> and that is Cabela's Adventure Camp. So, yeah, once again, when I was going through all the bits at Dan's house, um, I saw this, never seen it before, um, and, yeah, just decided to put it into the pile. Um, but looking it up online, it actually goes, well, it goes for £5 at CEX, which, yeah, is about right, but it goes for about £20 on eBay. So that'll be one that'll be going up in price at CEX very soon. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was a real surprise to me as to what that was going for. So, yeah, uh, just a Kinect game that was worth money. Just just doesn't go together. <laughs> um, then next up, we've got we've obviously got quite a few Mega Drive games. Um, one in there that I haven't pulled out, but the Asterix game uh, that we got, um, that goes for about £30 on eBay, so that's really good. But actually the most valuable game that we got 
wasn't a Meg Drive game, it was a Genesis game. And that was Muhammad Ali's Heavyweight Boxing. Uh, now, this is complete, it's all complete in box, so uh, yeah, really happy with that. Um, I, I haven't tried it yet, I haven't done any testing with it yet, so not too sure whether it works on my Mega Drive or not. Um, I know that some Genesis games do work on the Power Mega Drive, so like at the moment we've got Technocop in the collection. That will play, uh, that's a Genesis game, but it will play on PAL systems. So yeah, I think we've got a couple of Genesis games uh, off Dan. We've got this one, and then I think we've got Chuck Rock as well. So um, yeah, I will try them, and uh, maybe let you know in a future video as to whether they work or not. Um, but Muhammad Ali goes for about 40 pounds on eBay. So yeah, a real heavy hitter there. Then next up, obviously, I had to highlight this one for multiple reasons. But that is Microcosm on the Mega CD. So yeah, it is a Mega CD game. So that automatically moves it up the ranks. But the fact that it's a big box Mega CD game, which is the first one that I've got in the collection. Um, yeah, it is just amazing to have one of these. I know a lot of the earlier uh, Mega CD games did come out in cases like this. Uh, so one that comes to mind is Sewer Rat. Um, I think that is, uh, all of the versions of that are in this big case. And then as time went on, they then sort of transitioned to using the, the standard sort of double CD cases. But yeah, really chuffed to have that in the collection. Getting a Mega CD game is always a big highlight for me. Because um, it's not, I don't see them too often. Uh, the only time I'll ever really see them is if I'm scouring eBay, very occasionally at CEX, but normally the CEX ones, um, they're quite picky on what they what they actually take in. Um, but Microcosm goes for about forty pounds on eBay. Um, that's not it wasn't actually listed at CEX. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Right next up, uh, we've got uh, we've actually got a Dreamcast game, and this is. Giant Grand 2000. Uh, this is all American wrestling free. Um, so this is a Japanese Dreamcast game, and yeah, it's it was the only real Dreamcast game that Dan had there. He had a couple of the sort of normal power releases, um, but they were all ones that we already had in the collection, so I wasn't really interested in them. But to see that, I was like, yeah, do you know what? I'll give that a go um, because. What I'm hoping, um, and I haven't, once again, I haven't tested this yet, but uh, I think we can use a boot CD on the Dreamcast, um, and hopefully that will also bypass the region lock. Um, so, yeah, that's something I've got to test. Um, I'm pretty sure it will work, but, yeah, as I say, I haven't tested it yet. Uh, Giant Gram 2000 uh, goes for about £30 online. Uh, so, once again, another heavy hitter there. Then we start getting into the real heavy hitters, and I've definitely left the best till last. So the next two that we've got are going to be the uh, some 2600 games. And the first one that we've got is Demolition Herbie. So this was one of, I think, three or four uh, 2600 games that we picked up. Another one that I picked up was the original Mario Brothers as well, which is absolutely brilliant. Really glad to have that finally in the collection. Um, but yeah, this one actually goes for a size war man. Uh, looking it up on eBay, car only goes for £70. Um, I am going to have to do a bit of work with this because you probably at certain points you can hear um, it's rattling around um, the board inside. The car is sort of slipping and sliding about a bit. So yeah, it looks like someone's attempted to get into it before but stopped halfway. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try and do it where I don't completely destroy it the cover art um, but yeah I was really surprised at that one um, considering it was a game that I'd never heard of and I wasn't actually going to take it Dan actually just chucked it in and then the other 2600 game that we got that was worth a uh, sizable amount actually and that was Sorcerer's Apprentice so once again I saw this there um, it was the box was the real selling point for this for me um, yeah, it wasn't really a game I'd ever seen, really had any interest in, um, but as I say, the box really drew me in. The fact it was a 2600 game, and 
just look at it. <laughs> um, so looking that one up line on uh, looking that one up online, uh, it will pay about seventy five pounds for that. Um, it is complete. Um, it's got a bit of damage to the top of the box, um, but it's got the manual, it's got the car, everything's inside there. Um, so yeah, really really chuffed with that. And then the final game that I picked out, and this was the one that floored me. Really, really did. Um, because it is a Game Boy Color game. And yeah, I just could not believe what this was worth. Um, now, I would have literally completely ignored it um, had I not been buying I think actually originally... No, I think I did pick this up originally. Um, this was... Yeah, I picked this up. This was in the bundle that I initially bought. Uh, and then right at the very end, just before I left, I then ended up buying the rest of the Game Boy games that Dan had. Uh, but yeah, this, I think, was in my initial pile. Um, but neither me nor Dan actually knew what it was worth. It's only when I was... Um, I actually went back. I've been, I've been back to his house since uh, picking everything up uh, and picked up another load of stuff that's going to be in a future video. And I was talking to him about it, and he couldn't believe it either. Um, and that is Lara Croft Tomb Raider Curse of the Sword on the Game Boy Color. So it is complete. It's got cart manual, everything inside. Um, the box isn't perfect. It's a bit battered up on one side. Um, and there's actually a bit of a rip in the back of the case. So it's not going to be worth um, exactly what I'm quoting for, quoting here. Um, but obviously this is the sort of price that they're selling for. Uh, looking it up, uh, CEX are selling it for about £45, which, yeah, not too bad. It's about what you'd expect to pay for a Game Boy game. But if you tried to pick up one of these on eBay, you would be looking at £150 in a CIB condition. And I would say some of the ones on there for £150 are not pristine in the slightest. Um, so, yeah, I was absolutely floored by that game. Um, and yeah, even when I was sort of telling Dan about it, he was like, for a Tomb Raider game? It's like, yeah. Uh, so yeah, really, really shocked with that. That was, yeah, probably the biggest surprise out of everything that we picked up here. Um, and what else have we got? So that's all the, the games that I picked out. As I say, all the consoles work, which is good. Uh, the only thing that I've got to do a bit of work on was the uh, Super Wild Card. The, uh, the floppy disk uh, backup system for the Super Nintendo. Um, that needs the internal battery replaced and a new floppy drive put into it. Um, so probably about £25 worth of parts to put into it and then that will all be up and running. Um, I have put it into a uh, SNES. Um, it does load up, everything like that. Um, it's just as you, when you put the uh, a floppy disk in, it just doesn't read it. So, yeah, I'm just going to bite the bullet, get a new floppy drive for it, um, replace the internal battery, which is starting to leak. Um, and then, yeah, that will that will be up and running. As I say, that is something that I have seen before, really wanted to get it, but it was going for like 150, 250, 150 to 200 quid last time I looked. It's significantly dropped now. Uh, now goes for about 75. Um, so, yeah. So that is everything in my mega pickup haul. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna title this video. Um, but before we wrap up the video, let's quickly run through the totals. So for everything that I picked up from Dan, um, I paid 550 pounds. Um, if we'd got everything that we could from CEX, which is probably mostly just the, um, the CD based games. I think a lot of the sort of cart based games weren't available at CEX, um, but we would have paid £834. But if we picked up everything that we could from eBay, <laughs> it would be worth £3,492.50p. Absolutely blown away i really really am there are just some amazing bits here there really really are i have been really looking forward to one get this video put together for you all um but two to actually spend the time and start amalgamating it or integrating it into the collection 
Um, because as I say, there's quite a few games here. A lot that I've never heard of, but there are quite a few here that I have been actively seeking uh, to put into the collection. So yeah, really, really chuffed with that. Absolutely over the moon. Massive, massive thank you to Dan. Um, and yeah, I am going to probably spend the next week now uh, trying to get all this in. <laughs> um, but with that said, that is going to wrap up today's video. Um, I just want to say, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're not already, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to be kept up to date when I upload new videos. And yeah, with that said, thank you so, so much for watching today. Really hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you on the next one. All right, bye.